two boards. Which I've talked about before if you've seen any of my other sessions, but uh, this is a board that has four relays on it. Um, and we're actually going to uh, basically cut apart extension cords and jam them into the pitch of boards, one per relay. Um, and then we're going to build some software that's going to toggle the, the relays on or off in time to the music, either into either um, reading data from the music itself in the case of a MIDI file, or allowing you to tap out the rhythm to, uh, to, uh, to a song on your own uh, with a grid interface to show you what it, what it all looks like at the end. So I'll give you an example of what the hell I'm talking about here. Assuming the volume is loud enough. This is a show that I made with my hardware and software in my old apartment. So there's my lame little video. That's Trans Siberian Orchestra, which they didn't see me, which was nice. Um, so we're going to build a show similar to that. <clears throat> I'll actually run that show here just with a couple of lights so you can see it, see it, work, see it work. But uh, in order to build the hardware, um, you don't need a whole lot. You need one fidget interface kit, which will give you four channels, which are basically four strings of lights. Um, you need five two prong extension cords for each one of those kits that you want to use. And you use multiple kits, so if you want to have eight or 16 different uh, strands of lights, you just buy multiple kits and put them all together. Um, so extension cords like these, cheap ass brown ones that you find at Lowe's or wherever else you happen to shop, but they're you know like $3 each. Um, some short lengths of wire, just black wire. I've got here uh, about 14 to 16 gauge, which is gonna match what the extension cord wire is. Uh, some wire nuts that can handle that gauge of wire, you need uh, two per fidget interface kit, and a project box to hold everything, which you can pick up a Radio Shack, just an empty plastic box here. If you're going to put it outside or you want to hide it off somewhere, you don't want the bottom of the fidget kit or the wire to burn your house down. Not that I guarantee any of this won't burn your house down. Um, and of course, you need lights, and uh, you can either use external speakers, or I've seen a couple of people use FM transmitters. Um, so they, uh, It'll just take an output from like a stereo jack or whatever and transmit it on a specific FM station. So if you had an outdoor show, you can tell people to you know, tune to 93.6 or whatever and they'll be able to hear the music that's playing through the computer because it's being transmitted to their car. So you can now clog up traffic on your street, which is fun. All right, so I've got one already built. I'm gonna run through the directions of building an actual you know, one, one board. I've got cores and everything pre-cut, so we'll see if I can actually do this in front of people and. Uh, actually have it work. Is there a, they have, they have like circuit breakers here, right? Like I'm not going to burn down this building. No. Okay. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. All right. So guarantees. <coughs> is there a waiver I can sign for anything? Uh, yeah, but unfortunately it's, it's in okay, my car. It's okay, we ran it. All right. Well, no. Does everyone know where the emergency exits are? <laughs> Both sides. Both sides, yeah. One uh -huh. <laughs> over the wing. the stream. All right, so I've got five extension cords. And the basic idea is on one of them, you cut off the female end. So you've got the male end and cut off the female, split the wire up the center, strip off the ends, and just kind of twist together the frayed wires that are inside. So that's, this is what's going to get plugged into the wall. And then you're going to take the four other cords and cut off the male end. So you've got four female blocks, and each of these has you know three or four plugs in it, so you can hook up multiple strands of lights per channel. And again, split it, split it down the center, uh, strip off the ends, and twist up the wires. So that's the five extension cords. 
So extension cords generally, and I've never seen any that don't, but uh, they have two types of, of wire in them. Well, two types of shielding, I should say. Uh, one side is ribbed and one side is smooth. And the ribbed side is the neutral side and it's always in line with the, with the fat prong. And the smooth side is the active or the hot side and that's always in line with the small prong. So you kind of need to make sure you match up your hot and neutral, otherwise you will burn your hat So, what we're going to do here is take the four small wires here, which I've already twisted together, and these get twisted together with the, um, the rib wire from the male extension cord. So this is the rib wire, male extension cord. Just twist them together. If you, if you feel like soldering them to get a, bitter, a better connection, feel free, but you just jam them in a wire nut. That's close enough. So tie those bits together. Second piece is to take the smooth wires from the four female extension cords that are left, tie them together along with the smooth wire from the male extension cord. So what you're going to wind up with are these four pieces of wire and four pieces from the extension cord that are then going to go into the relays, which are going to be able to switch the, the switch open or closed. So we'll take our smooth wires from each one of these. I know there's nothing more thrilling than watching a guy twist wires together, so feel free to chat amongst yourselves for the next minute. Griff, do you have a joke? No. 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 But you always have a joke. Yeah, usually I do. The only joke I have this week is my football team, so. Uh -huh. Are you a Bills fan? No. I don't want to admit it, so. <laughs> I don't want to admit the team that I'm a fan of at the moment. So then we jam all of these, hopefully, together in a wire nut. This is the hardest part, because the, the wires on these are thick, so you really need to get a good connection on them so they don't fall out. So, as I said, you got these four wires left from the... Uh, from the rib side of the male extension cord, and you've got the remaining rib wires from the female extension cord. Which are one, two, three, four. So, the final piece is then we wire these into our fidget interface kit. Now the fidget interface kit, for each relay, there are three screw terminals. There's um, the, the ground, the common connection in the center, there's a normally open and a normally closed. So in our case, we want these to be normally open and we're going to switch them closed. So you wire one wire to the normally open, one wire to the common, and away you go. So again, if anyone has a joke, feel free. So how much would a fidget board like that cost? This fidget board is $57 currently. They've actually gone up in price a little bit, but they improved the way that they send them out. They actually have a box now. You get a USB cable with it. You get stickers. You get all sorts of stuff in the box. An actual user manual. The software is better. They're, the one that they're a Canadian company? Or? They are Canadian, yep. But there's an American distributor called Proxy Robotics, which I got a link at the end of the presentation for. And they're, so I just ordered this one, actually. It was $57. Dan stole my other one from DDC. <laughs> there are there are Mac, Linux, Windows. It's just those three Mac one. And, and the API is pretty much the same between all of them, so if you know how to do it on one platform, you know how to do it on the other two. So, so there we go. <clears throat> wired into the uh, into each relay, and basically th this is this is just kind of a quick, dirty, ugly schematic of what we're building here. So you got the male extension cord on the left, and you got the positive and negative side, the hot and neutral side, and basically you know tying the neutral side at the top and tying the active side at the bottom, and the switch is going to open and close depending on whether or not you tell it to be open or closed. So that's the hardware. Pretty simple. <clears throat> 